And yeah, so next I think we'd like to bring on, we're moving into the cloud, speaking about cloud, and next I'd like to bring on Brittany Saylor, uh, of, uh, oh, excuse me, Digital Advisor for Sustainability at Avenad, um, talk about consumption to conservation. So Brittany, there we go, hey. <laughs> I'm here. You're here, you're here, excellent. On the clicker, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Really glad to be here today. Um, I'm just going to pop onto the next slide. So, um, as mentioned, my name is Britt Saylor. I'm a digital advisor uh, at an organization called Avanad. Um, at Avanad, I actually get to focus on a really interesting kind of matrix or intersection of sustainability, technology, and innovation. And today, what I'm here to explore with you today is around um, cloud metrics and really in these cloud metrics, how they actually hold the key that allow us to move away from the consumption model that we see today and, and really move into the space of conservation. Um, let's be honest, the consumption model is not just in the cloud, but it's actually something that's reflected within society today. And so how do we really move away from that into a more conservation approach? Um, and by that, what I mean really is how do we decouple the growth that we're inevitably going to see in cloud services and move more towards conservation? And it's definitely possible. Um, the key oh, it looks quite different than I originally planned. <laughs> Um, what I don't know if you can see it on top, but essentially what it says is the cloud sustainability, sustainability metrics. So there are kind of four key sustainability metrics that really hold the key to moving towards that conservation approach. First and foremost is around energy effectiveness. Um, if we've heard anything today from the previous speakers, they articulated really well that data centers use a significant amount of energy. And what we need to be able to do is really break that down at a service level. We need to be able to break it down and understand the energy that's being used, what energy has the most impact on our digital estate, and how, we, how can we essentially mitigate that. So energy effectiveness is a significant um, factor and metric for us to look at. The second element is around resource utilization efficiency. So how can we improve the efficiency in the resources that we're using within data centers? Um, again, as one of the speakers articulated previously, uh, what essentially happens um, in, in this day and age is we look for more access, we want more resources, we want things to be faster, faster is better, um, but what that ultimately results in is it results in more servers. And with more servers comes more mining, more raw materials, and more impact on the environment around us. So we need to ensure that we have the correct balance between the resources that we're using, the performance that we need, as well as the impact on the environment. And I think it's an opportunity for us to take a look at this metric a bit closer. The third element, one of the metrics we need to be pushing our cloud service providers to provide for us, this is actually a service that Avanade provides as well, is around carbon. So what is our carbon footprint as it relates to our cloud usage? We need to know it, we need to know it in real time. We can't wait till the end of the year to know it because we need to understand where the impact is and essentially how we mitigate it. And then the last element is around uh, renewable energy usage. Again, this is a metric that cloud service providers should be providing us with, but I actually think they could go a step further to think about these data centers. As you kind of seen earlier, these data centers reside in areas that could there be a wind farm that exists with them? So as well as being able to report on your renewable energy, can you create and generate and give back renewable energy as well? I think it's fair to say we believe that these metrics to be true, to actually uh, uh, have a conservation approach, but <clears throat> the question might come, Britt, that's fine, but how do we do this? And one of the ways to do it is the Green Software Foundation, which again has been touched upon earlier today. But what I really like about the Green Software Foundation is that it gets us, gives us a set of principles to align to and to build with, but it also gives us a measurement that not only measures operational carbon, but embodied carbon in the data centers as well. So this is a tool that really will allow us to uh, monitor and measure against those previous metrics. However, um, all roads of those metrics lead to carbon. And I think that is 
not the only approach. It's a focused approach, rightfully so, but there are other planetary boundaries that we must care for as well. There are other metrics that we must care for as well, not just carbon. So this is why we at Avanade are considering some other key metrics as well, one in provide, having our cloud service providers provide us with, but how do we help organizations report on these metrics as well and essentially do better? Uh, one of those key metrics is biodiversity. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the biodiversity net gain regulation that's going to be coming into place in the UK, but this is not only reporting on uh, our impact on the environment, but it is also um, promising a net gain to the environment as well. So being able to measure, report, and have a positive impact on biodiversity as it relates to cloud services. Um, the second element is water. Um, if we've heard, we've heard another stat throughout the day that data centers result in a lot of heat. We've heard of alternative ways of um, using that heat, also using cooling systems, but I'm not sure if it was touched upon, but to cool the data centers now, uh, it's a significant amount of water. And as a uh, bit of an anecdote, my brother, he's an atmospheric scientist, um, which is kind of a fancy way of saying he's a weatherman. So he's a very smart weatherman. <laughs> um, but we were having a conversation about the weather one day um, about my home in Indiana. And we were talking about something. And he said something to me that, upon reflection, I knew, but I didn't really consider very much. And he said to me that all the water that we've ever had in the world and will ever have in the world already exists. It's here, we're not creating any new water. So for me to reconcile that with the amount of water that's actually used to cool down these data centers, it's difficult to reconcile. So it is a metric we should look at and we should look at how can we protect water and how can we distribute water more fairly um, in the cloud uh, environment. The next element is around circular design. Again, how do we reduce the amount of waste? How do we actually start with the design phase and uh, have less materials in our design? And then how can we introduce those products back into the life cycle from a circular design approach? And then last is society. Um, how are we impacting the communities that we reside in? How are we educating those people in the communities as well? Um, and really, a metric we should care about is uh, society and, and how we're, we, as cloud uh, service providers, as technologists, can really um, have an impact on society. And then last, I think I moved through pretty quickly, so I think it might get us back on time. But last, I'm just going to leave you with a quote. I'm not going to read it directly, but what I really like about this quote is that it allows us to think about the little things, and in accumulation, they can become big things. When we do the ordinary good things every day, they accumulate and they become large things in major change. And that's it for me today. Thanks, guys.